Hi everyone. Hi everyone. Hi everyone. How are you all doing? We had a little technical glitch. Um, so I just wanted to pop in. I'm in India. I'm still here visiting with my mom. And it's really fun doing these Facebook Lives from different parts of the world because I catch people from all over the world in different time zones, different countries, and that's so fabulous. So if you comment, I'd love to hear where you're from. But not only that, today we're going to experiment with taking questions. My wonderful husband who's behind the camera, he's behind the scenes, he's actually going to read your questions and read them out to me. So please feel free to post questions. We're going to see how we go with that. And, um, and please bear with me if there's any ambient noise or anything. So I'm still here in India visiting with my mom and I have carved out some time to write my third book. Um, <clears throat> I'm really enjoying the process of writing the third book. And what I've noticed is that since I've been here, I have been less in touch with um, the news, like media and stuff like that, mass media. And I've enjoyed that. You know, it's, um, you know, as much as I absolutely love America and I love, I, I have loved my time there, I still am looking forward, I always look forward to going there to America and I love the American people. I must say the American news though is so, um, it's so wild. It's, uh, the news is on American TV is nothing like the news in any other country. That as somebody who is um, almost like, I guess, an outsider in a way, because America has not been my home my entire life. I've just been going there for the last couple of years. Um, when I go there, the country itself is very different. It's beautiful. America is a beautiful place. The people are beautiful. But what I see on the news is almost like a different country from what it feels like actually being there physically. In other words, what goes on outside my front door or what goes on as I m make my way through the country and meet the people is polar opposite to the impression you get when you're watching American news. And this always blows my mind. It seems almost unreal what I see on the news. And so I wanted to speak a little bit about this topic today, um, uh, which is also related to the topic of my third book. My third book is about how I learned when I was in the near-death experience <clears throat> that our inner world actually is our real world, whereas we have been conditioned to believe that our outer world is the real world, not our inner world. The outer world is the real world. And then our inner self reacts to the outer world. But what if that's all wrong and it's actually the other way around? What if your inner world is the real world and your inner world determines what the outer world is going to be. What if, if you are peaceful inside, the outer world around you is peaceful? And what if because we have been conditioned to believe that the outer world is the real world and because we believe this, and we believe that we're supposed to change and manipulate the outer world to suit what we feel inside, that this is the reason why the world is in such a mess. Because we all believe that the outer world is real. And so here we are all getting stressed out with what's going on on the outside. And as we get stressed out, this stress is creating more stress in the outer world. But what if, if we all knew that the inner world is actually the real world and what is on the inside of all of us is what creates the outside, if we all knew that, we could actually create a much more peaceful world. So what we're seeing in the world today, what we're seeing on the news, what we're seeing, because a lot of people, it doesn't matter where you live, this is not about America, it's not about any one country, but there's so many people today that are saying that our world has gone crazy things are have gone crazy and they changed so much and people are all so angry and we're all so divided and we're so divisive maybe what we're seeing today in the world is a reflection of our collective inner state and so maybe it's time 
for us to actually start paying more attention to our collective inner state or our individual inner state to begin with. Now, as I said, I want you to, I would love for you to write your questions because I am happy to answer them today. But to go on a little bit more on this topic is that I truly believe that even when we, in whatever issues we're dealing with, whether it's to do with what the media is feeding us, what's happening on the news, whether it's even to do with our health and things like that, as soon as we believe that the outer world is real and we attack the outside world, it makes us more stressful it makes us more angry and what we're doing is we're actually feeding the problem instead of alleviating the problem instead of alleviating the problem and so let's say let's take even something like health for example the minute we believe that that um, when we're dealing with a health challenge that something external is attacking us we immediately get stressed and we get fearful and we go about attacking whatever it is but what if instead it served us better to actually turn inward? And this actually applies to everything. I'm talking about changing our lives in every way. What if we turned inward? Now, I want to be clear here. When I say we turn inward and work with our inner self, our inner net, I am not blaming us for the reason for the problem. It is not your fault. But what I am saying is if you want to actually make changes and take responsibility for your health or for making changes in the world, you're much better off actually going inward and becoming at peace with yourself or starting to ask yourself certain questions um, and asking your body certain questions to trigger healing. You're much better off going inward than trying to manipulate externally. Because here's what happens again. If it's something you're upset about with the condition of the world and it makes you angry, if you go out and share your anger, you're actually contributing to the problem because most people don't like listening to an angry person. It makes them even more defensive and it'll make them defend their side even more. Whereas um, now, and also I wanna say here, hit a pause button and say here that anger is not a negative emotion. You need to embrace your anger. But then the question is, what is the anger trying to tell you? In other words, what would you like to see instead? So I would flip it. If I'm angry about something, I ask myself, okay, let's embrace that anger and ask myself, why am I angry about it? What situation would I like to see instead that would actually alleviate my anger? And so when you come up with the solution that would alleviate your anger, then what I would do is I would become an activist for the solution. Many people mistake anger and activism, but they are two different things. When you're truly an activist, you are bringing people a better solution than what they currently are working with. You're not sharing anger, you're sharing solutions. That's what activism is. Activism is inspirational, it's passionate. It's not about anger and fear. The opposite is anger and fear, and that's what we're seeing in the world right now. And a lot of people are sharing anger and fear under the guise of activism. And that's something that we need to change. And the way to change it is to turn inward and ask ourselves, all right, so what is the solution? What would I like to see instead? What would bring me peace? Other ways of um, finding the solution within yourself is to use your imagination. I always feel sad that when, as children, we were always discouraged from using our imagination. We were always told to get realistic and stop, um, stop daydreaming, get real, focus, focus on your work. Actually, the daydreaming, the imagination, is actually our connection to our soul. It's our connection to the other side of the veil. It's our connection to our higher self our true self, our authentic self. We should have always been encouraged to use our imagination. And we need to be more encouraged to use our imagination than to actually listen or get stressed out about what's happening in the outer world. And um, I'm gonna actually turn to Danny now and just ask him, are there any pending questions that I can answer before I go on with other things? There are. Great. I Gwendolyn asks, 
how do you deal with people who judge you harshly and say they want to help? I find myself getting offended. I lose my center. I totally relate to that and I trust you all heard that. Gwendolyn asks how to deal with people who judge you and they say they want to help but they're actually judging you. Now here's the thing. Um, any one of you, now many of you are very helpful people, you love helping people, but we have to be careful when we offer our help to people. And Gwendolyn, I suggest that maybe you share this video with, um, with your friends because we have to be careful that when we offer help to people, that we're not suggesting that they need help. Um, I, I believe the best way to help someone is to see them as perfect and to see them as not needing help. That is the best help that anyone can give you. Anyone can give anyone. So all of you helpful people there, I know you mean well, I know people mean it from the heart, but I apologize, <laughs> there's the phone ringing in the background, but I'm sure someone will pick it up. Um, <clears throat> the best thing that you can do for anybody who you feel needs help is to help them see that they are whole and they don't need help and that they are not broken. That's the best way to help someone who needs help. Okay, so how do you deal with someone that's treating you like you need help? Um, you can always thank them. You can always thank them for their offer of help and you can say to them that um, I'm okay, I actually don't need any help, and I know it makes you feel off-center, but just know that they're coming from a place within them that feels the need to reach out, to justify uh, their feelings. And in many ways, when people um, impress their version of help onto you, it's because they are looking for approval for their way of doing things. So give them your approval, acknowledge them, but go on and do things your own way. And remember, the best way to help people is by seeing the perfection within them and making them realize they're not broken and they don't need help. See them as whole. Thanks for that question, Gwendolyn. Connie asks, is there a separation between anger and me? Or, anger is me? That's an interesting question. Um, anger is an emotion that you feel, but it doesn't have to be you as such. It is a facet. And one thing that when we feel anger, and any emotion that we don't like, if it's anger, if it's fear, if it's stress, it's important not to suppress it or deny it. We can embrace it, but after we've embraced it, we allow it to pass. We allow it to tell us what we want it to tell us. We allow it to teach us something. We allow it to communicate with us. But then we also allow it to pass because even underneath all these emotions, there is something trying to get out, something revealing itself. There, you could find under anger, there is frust frustration. Under frustration, there could be a feeling of inadequacy, a feeling of fear of not being enough. And as you go through these layers, you find who you truly are. When you deny the layers, you never uncover who you are and get to the truth. When you allow the layers, you actually set yourself free. So allow the layers, allow the anger. You don't have to express it in public, but acknowledge that you feel it. Acknowledge it to yourself. That's more important than anything else. So thanks for your question. James asks, is there an art to being a teacher slash student? Oh, absolutely there is. By the way, guys, don't you just love Danny's voice? <laughs> so, yes, there's an absolute art to being both a teacher and a student. And I think there's a very fine line be between the two because teachers are students as well. People say, I'm a teacher, but do you know, I feel I'm a student because I'm learning all the time. I'm learning from all of you all the time. And the art is to always be open always be empty because the minute you actually feel that you are 
the person that is there to teach. The minute you feel that you, your purpose is to teach and not to learn, then what happens is you become stagnant. You, f you stop absorbing information, but it's actually a circular thing. You have to constantly be empty in order to learn and you have to empty yourself in order to teach. You're, we're giving and we're receiving. We're giving and we're receiving. So whenever we feel that we, um, we are a teacher and therefore don't accept learning, you're actually unable to continue to give or unable to continue to teach because your information becomes old and stagnant. So we have to always feel open to learning and always empty everything in order to learn. That's a great question, James. Belita asks, are our loved ones still with us after they've passed over? Absolutely. Our loved ones are always with us. And never fear that, um, that we are keeping them trapped when we communicate with them or ask them questions. Your loved ones are guiding you all the time. And they can be in multiple places at once. And that's the thing. In the other realm, time is not linear. We perceive it as linear here in our physical bodies. But in the other realm, when you're out of your physical body, you can experience all of time at the same time. So your loved one can experience all of time at the same time, which means they can be with you. Um, they can be with you and they can be with other people at the same time, your other family members. So you're not pulling, the, pulling them away from something more important. They want to be with you. And if your loved ones were communicating with you right now, which I'm sure they are, they would want you to know that they want you to be happy. Don't feel guilt, um, un no matter under what circumstances they passed. Your loved ones don't want you to feel guilt for them passing. Um, even if, you, if your loved one that passed was a partner or a spouse, don't feel guilty about falling in love again because chances are your loved one in the other realm is helping to set you up with somebody else because they don't want you to feel lonely. They don't want you to spend your life grieving for them. They know that life is a gift and they're waiting for you on the other side, but time is not linear. So for them, it'll pass in a jiffy. They want you to make the most of the gift of life that you have. Um, and it seems there's a lot more questions. This is great. Huh. Hillary asks, how do we go about emptying ourselves so that we might have love stream in? Oh, that's a great question. Okay, so a lot of you, um, and I know that so many of you who are attracted to my work and my story, you're very, very good at giving and giving of yourself, but you are not good at receiving. So um, this is what's very important. You need to be able to receive. And the way, and what happens is that in the act of receiving, you will automatically become empty and filled and empty. So the way that we get blocked, the way we get blocked and not good at emptying ourselves is because we have grown up believing that we that is much better to give than to receive. And yes, it is wonderful to give. And it's wonderful if you're a giver. But here's what happens when we take it to the extreme, which I know many of you do inadvertently, is that when you really believe in the extreme that it's better to give than to receive, um, the minute that somebody else is also doing the giving and you are the recipient, you feel guilty. I say this because I was like that. We feel, oh my gosh, uh, I just received something. I got to repay it back. We feel obligated. And so all our um, receiving um, antennas are then blocked off because we're immediately thinking in terms of how can I make it up to them? Any of you relate to this? And you can respond in the comments if you do. The minute someone gifts you with something, you feel, oh my gosh, I have to make it up to them. And we feel this burden. That's how you fill yourself up without emptying yourself. You constantly, excuse me, you're constantly feeling this burden 
from everything that other people are doing for you or from the gifts of the universe instead of enjoying the fruits of it enjoying the gifts from the universe enjoying the gifts from other people here's how it works when other people gift you they're gifting it to you because it comes naturally to them and they and it gives them pleasure to gift you what comes naturally to them when you gift other people which you are doing all the time you're gifting them with what comes naturally to you but the minute that you start to feel obligated because other people are gifting you, you stop doing what comes naturally to you and you start going into the process of, oh, I have to repay them, I have to repay them, I feel burdened, um, uh, this person's given me this, then they're going to think badly of me. And the minute you feel that burden, you're blocking your giving and you're blocking your receiving. And so my suggestion to you is to accept gifts graciously because you are allowing other people the pleasure of giving and give graciously whatever gives you pleasure to give. Don't give out of obligation because that's dishonest. Imagine if everyone else was giving you things out of obligation because you have been giving them. You would rather they didn't give you. So do not give out of obligation. Just keep giving of yourself what comes easily. And to give you an example, I love sharing information. I love it. I love it more than anything. I love sharing the information I learned from the other side because I had to die. I had to get end stage cancer to learn this information. And I don't want other people to have to go through that. I don't want, even though the NDE, the near death experience was beautiful, I don't want other people to have to go through the pain and the suffering I went through to get there. And this is why I share information easily and that comes to me easily. And, but there are other things that don't come to me easily, which other people gift to me. My wonderful husband, for him, technology comes to him easily, but not to me. But I take it from him graciously because it helps me do what I do. It helps me give what I give easily. And if we all learn to receive graciously and give graciously, the world would turn much easier. Our lives would turn much easy, easier. I have a wonderful assistant named Raw who does things easily that come to her easily which doesn't come to me I have another wonderful social media coordinator who does uh, who does my social media and it comes to her easily and it doesn't come to me easily they both go above and beyond what their job asks them to do and I am so grateful to them but if but if I spent my life worrying about constantly repaying them, it would take me away from doing what I do easily. And I know they love to do what they do because they love what I do. And so it all works smoothly, like all the gears in a, in a mechanism. So that's what I invite you to do. Just give what comes to you easily. And um, maybe I have time for one final question. The internet's going a little bit wobbly, so yes. I think, okay. I think this might have to be the last question. And I also wanted to mention to everyone, though, uh, let's go to the final question and then I'll mention my final point. Diane says, I was a caregiver for my mother who passed 10 days ago. Oh, my heart goes out to you, Diane. How do I take care of me? Ah. <sighs> See, that is so important. Even while we're taking care of our loved ones, we have to also take care of ourselves. And this message is to all of you caregivers out there, whether you are a healer, a teacher, a nurse, a doctor, a medical practitioner, a natural healer, or just a family member, you have to take care of yourself. And the first thing I would tell you is do what you love to do. Spend time I'm sleeping. Don't judge yourself. Um, Diane, right now, if you are grieving, first of all, my heart goes out to you. Do whatever you can do to heal. Do whatever you need to do to heal. And don't worry about your mother. She's in a beautiful place. She's watching over you. And I don't know why I'm feeling she's asking me to say this to you. 
you have to look after yourself first right now also i'm going to suggest you go to my website www.anitamurjani.com um, there is a tab that calls ask anita under that tab there are three sections that call watch listen read in there i have a lot of my uh, radio shows archived in there and i have a lot of youtube videos in those YouTube videos, I actually speak about how to deal with this. Even in my archived radio shows, I would really suggest you listen to some of them because I really speak about how you can take care of yourself um, and also how to deal with grief. Um, so please go into my archives and please check it out. This is your time. Don't judge yourself, love yourself, and be kind to yourself. Give yourself a hug. Allow yourself all the time you need to grieve. There is no time limit to grieving. Your mother is still with you, and really my thoughts are with you. And before I sign off, I want to tell all of you that I truly um, really appreciate every single one of you. I appreciate your comments. I love seeing all of you when I do live events. I really do. That's something I love doing. Another thing I do with a lot of passion is live events. And I'm constantly working on my material. And what I have recently created is a meditation together with Barry Goldstein. I've created a meditation um, which is to take you on your own near-death experience. And actually, I am doing a cruise in a few months. It's coming up in March, and I am launching that meditation on that cruise. I am so excited about this cruise because I get to spend seven days with you. And because I know how much you all love him, we've asked Joe Dispenza to join us on this cruise. And the cruise, the theme of the cruise is called Bridging the Mind and the Heart. And what we're going to do is we're going to teach you about learning to receive, learning to love yourself, and what better place to learn to receive than on a cruise where everything is so abundant, where the universe is going to be rewarding you every day. And we're going to take you on a journey through your own near-death experience. So um, I'm going to love you and leave you right now. And I look forward to connecting with you again real soon. I'm still here for another week or two. Um, so I'll be connecting with you really soon. Thank you all so much. Take care. Love you. See you soon. Bye.